Welcome back. I am Collins Trott, Child Development Faculty on the Wallace Community College Dothan campus. In this episode, we are going to be learning about children's study of time, continuity, and change. In other words, history. Human beings seek to understand themselves by understanding their past. Young children are highly interested in their past. The stories of what they did yesterday appeal as nothing else does. Do we recognize that teaching history to children is not difficult because children are naturally interested in people, their houses, their clothes, and other aspects of life to which they can relate? After reviewing all of the week's content, you should be able to explain the importance of history in early childhood education, discuss the key concepts and themes that children can explore in the study of history, and learn ways to begin to teach and introduce children to concepts of history. So join me, Miss Trot, as we learn all about children's study of time, continuity, and change history. <laughs> interest alone in sufficient rationale for including history in the early childhood curriculum. But history is important for other reasons as well. Human beings seek to understand themselves by understanding their past. To be able to know the past helps us develop a historical perspective and to answer, who am I? What happened in the past? How am I connected to the past? Through history, children learn about a society's common memory its core values, and what past events and decisions are part of our present circumstances. Without history, one cannot undertake any sensible inquiry into the political, social, or moral issues in society. The study of history has been defined as a time-oriented study that refers to what we know about the past. Standard two of the National Council of Social Studies is time, continuity, and change. Key concepts are time, change, and continuity of human life, the past, and the methods of the historian. Young children do have a sense of time, but it's more intuitive than conventional. During early childhood, children can distinguish past from present and begin to describe daily events in a sequential pattern. Young children associate chronological time with personal time as reflected by the cyclical nature of daily events. Intuitive time is distinct from operational time. Operational time involves the understanding of relations, of successions, and duration, and is based on analogous operations in logic, which may be either qualitative or quantitative. Not until children enter formal operations near the beginning of adolescence are they able to master operational time. In many respects, the study of history is a study of change. Some changes represent progress, Others do not. Nevertheless, change is universal, no matter where we live or how change will be a part of our lives. Being able to accept and adapt to change is crucial to living fully. Rather than fearing change, children can be taught to accept the inevitable of change and learn ways to adapt to the change they experience. Surrounding children with opportunities to experience change, the immediate environment offers many learning tools. From the school, neighborhood, nature study, and themselves, children can learn that change is a continuous and always present, change affects their lives in different ways, and change can be recorded and these records can help others understand the things that have changed. Although life is constantly changing, there is a continuity of history. These are the similarities in the human experience. Exploring their family histories, children can gain a sense of this continuity. Celebrating holidays, as people have always done, also gives children the feeling of connection among the human experience. Children are intensely interested in both the immediate and distant past. And although dates have little or no meaning, children as young as five years old are able to recognize the difference between past and present and have demonstrated the ability to order events chronologically using photographs and pictures with broad distinctions such as long ago and close to now. 
Helping children understand and explore the past does not mean you must teach them a true historic sense of time. In helping children gain a concept of the past, adults must shuttle back and forth with children from the present to the past as they react to the ever-present urge to understand what has gone before. Even though the past is untouchable and far away, vicarious experiences with the past are possible for young children. People such as parents, grandparents, the school staff, and neighbors are resources for helping children understand the past. Real objects help children understand the past and life far from them and help them see significant relationships within their own neighborhood. Books, stories, art, music are all sources of knowledge about past ways of life. Right from the start, children can begin developing the skills of the historian. To do so, they must engage in developing inquiry skills. Children learn to question and find out about their current and more distant past. Real historical understanding requires that students engage in historical reasoning, think about cause and effect, relationships, analyze records of the past, and reach conclusions. It is important to involve children in being historians. Through hands-on experiences and activities such Learning as about history requires that children develop a sense of the passage of time. Routines can teach time, and in preschool and primary grades, there are regular routines. Children in the primary grades can chart their own routines and take more responsibility for scheduling their day. Children may not be able to measure time conventionally until age eight or nine. You can prepare children for measuring time with a clock by giving children meaningful experiences with concepts of duration, sequence of events, and temporal order, which will prepare them to tell time in the traditional way. The continuity of human life can be shown through exploring family histories. Children can gain a sense of this continuity in several ways. Stories and narratives of families life long ago put primary age children in touch with the continuity of life and understanding that even though life, even through life changes, humans continue to share many of the same emotions and feelings. Engaging children in developing inquiry skills and the habit of questioning can begin developing the skill of the historian. Help children learn to generate questions and identify problems gather information, observe the data, analyze the information, and draw conclusions. Now, let's review what we've learned. Children do have a sense of the past. They are interested in studying their personal history. From these beginnings, you can foster concepts of history through the regular activities of the preschool primary classroom. Focusing on the key concepts of time, change, and the continuity of life, the past and the methods of the historian, children can begin to develop an understanding of history. Scientific and technological change can be integrated. It is true, however, that children's experiences in history must be as concrete as possible and vitally relevant to the child's learning. Learning about their own past's experiences, the passage of time, interacting with older volunteers, studying the immediate past, what we did today, and using the methods of the historians must all be based on children's activities and experiences. That wraps us up for this episode. You can learn more about this topic by reviewing the resources posted in your course. As always, if you have any questions, please contact me or your instructor. Thanks for joining me, Miss Trot, as we learn all about children's study of time, continuity, and change, history. See you next time.